Welcome to Who Died Today America, your trusted source for honoring those who have bid us farewell. On this 15th of July, we're not just delivering news, but saluting extraordinary lives that have touched ours. Today, we acknowledge recent passings while paying special tribute to notable figures we've lost. Each left an indelible mark on our society and inspired countless others. Join us as we remember their remarkable contributions, reflect on their impact, and celebrate the legacies they've woven into the fabric of our nation. In Who Died Today America, their stories live on. Stay with us as we pay homage to these remarkable lives and their enduring influences. Number 11, Dakota Fred Hurt, a renowned gold prospector who became a popular face on the Discovery Channel reality series Gold Rush and several of its spin-offs, passed away on July 11, 2023. He was 80 years old and succumbed to brain cancer. Hurt was an integral part of Gold Rush from its first season in 2010. Initially portrayed as an antagonist, taking over another prospector's claim in Porcupine Creek, Alaska. It was later revealed that what appeared to be a takeover was an amicable sale in a classic twist of reality TV drama. Heard remained with the show for four seasons, prospecting in Alaska's Cahoon Creek during the fourth season. He left the series with his crew with plans to start a new show titled All That Glitters. However, in 2018, Hurt and his son Dustin returned to television screens with a new spin-off, Gold Rush White Water. They prospected for gold in Hainesboro, Alaska, targeting the Whitewater Creeks and waterfalls in their search. Hurt remained on the show until his death. The most recent season, which began in late 2022, concluded just a month before his passing. Hurt also appeared on Gold Rush South America and Gold Rush, The Legend of Porcupine Creek. Before his adventurous life as a prospector, Hurt had a career in construction and commercial diving. As an homage to his life and legacy, his family has requested that in lieu of flowers, donations be made to the Mike Rowe Works Foundation, reflecting Hurt's lifelong commitment to hard work and his love for unique hands-on careers. Dakota Fred Hurt leaves behind a legacy not just of gold, but of indomitable spirit and tenacity in the face of challenge. Number 10, the world of rhythm and blues mourns the loss of one of its iconic figures, William Hart, lead singer and creative force behind the renowned group, the Delphonics. Hart passed away at the age of 77 on July 11, 2023, due to complications during surgery at a hospital in his native Philadelphia. Known for his distinctive falsetto and gifted songwriting, Hart was the artistic driving force behind the Delphonics, penning 18 of the group's 20 charting singles from 1968 to 1974. Hart's signature contributions to the group resulted in a string of hits that defined the Philly soul sound and solidified the Delphonics' place in R&B history. The group's debut single, La La Means I Love You, skyrocketed to number four on the Billboard Hot 100 Singles chart, cementing their status in the music industry. Their seminal track, Didn't I Blow Your Mind This Time, earned them a Grammy and has been covered by legendary artists, including Aretha Franklin. Hart's influence was felt beyond his time with the Delphonics. His songs experienced a resurgence in popularity during the 90s and early 2000s, when they were sampled by prominent hip-hop artists like Ghostface Killer, Notorious Big, and Missy Elliott, showcasing the timeless appeal of his work. A man of faith and commitment, Hart attributed his longevity in the music industry to a clean lifestyle and a dedication to producing clean music. His significant contributions to R&B music have left a lasting legacy, and he will be remembered as a luminary of the genre. Number 9. The Oscar-winning and Tony Award-winning actor Alan Arkin has passed away at the age of 89, leaving behind a legacy filled with groundbreaking performances and artistic mastery. His death was confirmed on June 30, 2023, by his sons Adam, Matthew and Anthony, who described him as a uniquely talented force of nature, both as an artist 
and a man. Arkin, born on March 26, 1934, in Brooklyn, New York, embarked on a successful acting career that spanned over six decades. He began his journey in the entertainment industry with a brief stint in music as part of a folk group called The Terriers, with their hit top five single, The Banana Boat Song, in 1957. However, his lifelong passion for acting led him to leave the band and join the Second City Improvisational Comedy Troupe in Chicago. In 1961, Arkin made his Broadway debut in From the Second City and won a Tony in 1963 for his performance in Enter Laughing. His cinematic journey began with a role in the comedy The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming, earning him the first of four Oscar nominations. However, his most lauded performance came with the 2006 film Little Miss Sunshine, where he played Edwin Hoover, earning him an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Arkin's most recent work was in Netflix's The Kaminsky Method, where he co-starred alongside Michael Douglas, earning him Emmy nominations in 2019 and 2020 and Golden Globe and Screen Actors Guild nominations in 2020 and 2021. A loving husband, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather, Arkin's legacy extends beyond his on-screen roles and resonates with the affection and admiration he received from his family. He is survived by his wife, Suzanne Newlander, whom he married in 1996, and three sons, Adam Arkin, Matthew Arkin, and Anthony Dana Arkin. His creative spirit and remarkable talent will be deeply missed. Number eight, the world of wrestling mourns the loss of one of its distinctive figures, Mike Mantor Halak, who passed away peacefully in his sleep on July 11, 2023, at the age of 55. Launching his career with the then-named World Wrestling Federation WWF in 1994, Halak initially grappled under the persona of Bruiser Mastino. Yet it was his audacious persona, Mantor, based on the Greek mythological creature Minotaur, that truly marked his place in the wrestling universe. With a bull's head worn during entrances and accompanied by resounding bellowing and snorting, Mantor became a memorable figure in the middle 1990s wrestling scene. Over his tenure in WWF, now known as World Wrestling Entertainment, he competed with wrestling legends, including Bret Hart and Scott Razor Ramon Hall. Halak's career expanded beyond the WWE, wrestling under various other personas like Tank and Mad Mustafa with different promotions, including the World Championship Wrestling. In 2016, Halak was part of a significant class action lawsuit against WWE, alleging the organization's concealment of brain injury risks to wrestlers. The lawsuit was dismissed eventually, but it cast a spotlight on the physical toll wrestling takes on its performers. Halak's larger-than-life persona, passion, and dedication to wrestling entertainment left an indelible mark on the industry. His contributions to wrestling, both in and out of the ring, will remain part of the sport's rich history. Number 7. Randy Fulmer, known for his remarkable contribution to the world of animation, passed away at the age of 73 on July 10, 2023, after a battle with cancer. His work has left an indelible mark on Disney classics such as The Emperor's New Groove and Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Fulmer's career in animation took off with projects like Sesame Street and various TV commercials. He then joined Don Bluth Studios, where he worked on popular video games like Dragon's Lair and Space Ace. From there, Fulmer moved on to filmation, lending his talent to popular TV cartoons such as Brave Star, She-Ra, Princess of Power, and Ghostbusters. In 1987, Fulmer joined the animation powerhouse Disney, where he worked on the revolutionary film Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which ingeniously merged live action and animation. During his tenure at Disney, Fulmer expanded his skill set to encompass production, effects, and art coordination. His remarkable portfolio includes The Little Mermaid, The Lion King, The Emperor's New Groove, and Chicken Little, which marked his last film before retirement. However, Fulmer's passion for creativity didn't end with his retirement from Disney. He returned to a childhood hobby of building guitars, 
transforming this pastime into a business, wing guitars. His handcrafted bass guitars became a preferred choice for several professional musicians. His love for the craft was captured in Restrung, a 2014 documentary that Fulma co-produced and narrated, showcasing his journey with guitars. Randy Fulmer's legacy extends beyond the enchanting worlds he created through animation, living on in the music played on his handcrafted guitars. His creativity and innovation will be dearly missed. Number 6. Joe Campbell, former defensive end for the Oakland Raiders and Super Bowl XV champion, has passed away at the age of 68, according to his brother Patrick. Campbell was found deceased in Florida after a hike, likely from a cardiac incident. Born in Wilmington, Delaware, Campbell was selected 7th overall in the 1977 NFL Draft by the New Orleans Saints. He demonstrated considerable prowess on the field during his three seasons with the Saints, acquiring a total of eight sacks. However, Campbell's crowning achievement came in the 1980 season when he was traded to the Oakland Raiders. The team, led by head coach Tom Flores and quarterback Jim Plunkett, defeated the Philadelphia Eagles to clinch the Super Bowl title in 1981. After two seasons and 13 games with the Raiders, Campbell moved to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 1981, marking his final year in the NFL. Before entering the NFL, Campbell played college football at Maryland and was an All-American defensive lineman. Following his professional sports career, he transitioned into education and was inducted into the Delaware Sports Hall of Fame in 1992. Campbell encountered a life-altering event in 2007 when he was involved in a bicycle collision with a pickup truck. The accident resulted in a fractured skull, brain damage, and a severely injured left forearm, requiring surgical reattachment. Campbell spent over six weeks in a coma and had to rely on a respirator for breathing. Yet, he displayed incredible resilience and maintained a positive outlook on life despite the challenges. Campbell's legacy extends beyond the football field as his resilience and spirit have left a lasting impact on his peers and community. He is remembered not just for his past athletic achievements but for his down-to-earth personality and dedication to self-improvement. His passing is mourned by his former teammates, friends and the entire Raider Nation. Number 5. Jimmy Weldon, legendary voice actor, ventriloquist, and television host, passed away at the age of 99 on July 6. Weldon became an integral figure in American animation. Best known as the voice behind Hanna-Barbera's beloved cartoon character Yaki Doodle, Weldon's contribution to the world of animation was immeasurable. After serving in World War II, he began his career as a disc jockey, developing the character Webster Webfoot. The character gained popularity, ultimately leading Weldon and Webster to television through the Webster Webfoot show. Later, he moved to California, lending his talents to KKOP TV, Channel 13, in Hollywood. During the 1960s, Weldon continued to enchant audiences on KGO TV, Channel 47, in Fresno, California. However, his impact extended beyond television he voiced Solomon Grundy in Hanna Barbera's Challenge of the Super Friends and made appearances on shows such as Dragnet, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, The Waltons, Dallas, and Different Strokes. Weldon's legacy transcended the boundaries of entertainment. He shared his World War II experiences on his YouTube channel, Jimmy's Lecture, and was a member of the Premier Speakers Bureau. A multifaceted talent with a career spanning decades, Weldon's voice and character creations will continue to resonate with audiences for generations to come. Number 4. Thomas Tom Roberts, a revered lighting director in the music industry and the gentle giant of Randy Travis's team, has tragically passed away at the age of 68. Roberts, according to the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department, was fatally shot by his wife, Christine Ann Roberts, 72, at their Nashville home due to an alleged act of infidelity. The event transpired on their front porch, where Roberts sustained a single gunshot wound to his chest. Roberts, whose illustrious career in stage lighting contributed significantly to the success of numerous shows, 
was fondly remembered by country music star Randy Travis. In his tribute, Travis expressed his deep sense of loss, stating that the stage has gone dim with the passing of Tom Roberts, and honoring him as one of the very best stage lighting technicians in the business. Roberts, described as a gentle giant, was not only known for his proficiency in his craft, but his charismatic personality and contagious optimism. His can-do attitude and perpetual willingness to lend a hand were just a few of the qualities that Travis and other members of the touring team held in high regard. Roberts had also worked with late artist Olivia Newton-John, who he admired for her sweet, generous and kind nature. As the country music world grapples with the tragic loss of this luminary figure, his contributions to the industry, his unforgettable spirit and the impact he had on those around him will forever be remembered. Despite the gaping void left by his departure, Travis and his band are determined to carry on with their More Life tour, albeit with a bittersweet sentiment, in honor of Roberts. Number 3. Evelyn M. Whitkin, an esteemed geneticist whose groundbreaking insights into DNA repair processes revolutionized the medical field, passed away on July 8, 2023 due to complications from a fall. She was 102. Venturing into genetics research in the 1940s, Whitkin marked her place in an emerging field at a time when few women were present. Her path led her to the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in 1944, where her work on E. coli mutations ignited a lifelong passion for genetics. After earning her PhD from Columbia University in 1947, under the mentorship of acclaimed geneticist Theodosius Dobzhansky, Witkin dedicated her life to understanding the intricate mechanisms of DNA repair. Her seminal discovery of the SOS response in bacteria, a gene-activating process that aids in DNA repair when exposed to DNA-damaging agents such as UV radiation, transformed scientific understanding of DNA repair and the molecular basis of cancer and aging. Throughout her illustrious career, Whitkin's contributions were widely acknowledged. She served at the State University of New York's Downstate Medical Center and Rutgers University in New Jersey. In 1977, Whitkin joined the ranks of the National Academy of Sciences. She also held fellowships with the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, and the American Academy of Microbiology. Her accolades include the 2000 Thomas Hunt Morgan Medal, the National Medal of Science in 2002, and the Albert Lasker Award for Basic Medical Research in 2015, shared with fellow geneticist Stephen J. Elledge. That same year, she won the Wiley Prize in Biomedical Sciences. Evelyn M. Whitkin's legacy of resilience, curiosity, and innovation will continue to inspire future generations of scientists. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Martin Landau, a seasoned actor who showcased his versatility in both film and television, passed away at the age of 89 in Los Angeles on July 15, 2017. Known for his memorable roles in the TV series Mission Impossible and the film Ed Wood, Landau's commitment to his craft made him a standout figure in the entertainment industry. Landau's acting journey began in the 1950s, where he garnered success in both theater and television. From 1966 to 1969, he graced the small screen as role in hand in Mission Impossible, alongside his then-wife, Barbara Bain. His ability to embody a variety of characters week after week truly demonstrated his extensive acting range. Despite facing certain challenges in his career, Landau made a triumphant return to the limelight in the late 1980s. His roles in Francis Ford Coppola's Tucker the Man in His Dream and Woody Allen's Crimes and Misdemeanors earned him well-deserved Academy Award nominations. His crowning achievement came in 1995 with an Oscar-winning performance as Bella Lugosi in Tim Burton's Ed Wood. This role also earned him a Golden Globe, further cementing his status as a gifted actor. In addition to his on-screen accomplishments, Landau was an alumnus of the revered Actors Studio in New York, 
and served as a mentor to fellow actors, including Jack Nicholson. His enduring legacy, coupled with his unyielding passion for acting and his ability to overcome professional adversity, will continue to inspire aspiring performers for generations to come. Number 1. Bridget Berlin, the renowned socialite turned artist and muse of the iconic Andy Warhol, passed away at the age of 80 on July 17, 2020. The cause of her death was cardiac arrest, triggered by a pulmonary embolism. Berlin was a pivotal figure in the New York underground art scene of the 1960s and 70s, embodying a life of audacious freedom and radical self-expression. Born into a privileged family, Berlin rejected her upbringing to immerse herself in the New York City art world. She quickly became a close friend of Warhol and was a fixture at his famous studio, The Factory. Berlin's eccentric, larger-than-life persona made her a compelling subject for Warhol's art, and she starred in many of his films, including Chelsea Girls and Bad. She was also known for her own unique artistic endeavors, such as Polaroid photography and breast print artwork. In a scene replete with flamboyant characters, Berlin, also known as Bridget Polk due to her penchant for administering amphetamine injections or pokes, was a standout. She was a collector of people and experiences, capturing the bohemian demimonde of the time through her extensive recordings and photographs. Despite her rejection of the formal title, many of her contemporaries, including Robert Rauschenberg, Jasper Johns, John Chamberlain and Larry Rivers, acknowledged her as an artist. Besides her influence in the art world, Berlin's audacious life and unique persona left an indelible mark on those around her. The filmmaker John Waters described meeting Berlin for the first time as being scared of her in the best way. Waters later cast Berlin in several of his own films after Warhol's death, dubbing her Old Money Combined with Danger and his favorite underground movie star. Berlin's unconventional life was as much an art form as her creations, and her legacy continues to inspire and intrigue. Even in her later years, Berlin never lost her creative spark, mounting exhibitions of her photographs and creating intricate needlepoint art. As an underappreciated artist and a significant figure in the history of pop art, Bridget Berlin's story serves as a potent symbol of artistic defiance and nonconformity. Her life and work will continue to resonate in the world of art and beyond. You can continue watching these videos about recent celebrity deaths in June on your screen. To keep yourself updated, you can turn on notifications.